Hey, GovCon Giants family. It's your host, Eric Coffee here, live on IG. What we got going on? All right. Freight Lady BJ. What's going on? El Boogie. Hook Man. Budget Baller. All right. And by the way, I'm wearing my... Uh, my brother brought me this shirt from Cebu, the Philippines. So, I thought I would wear it because since I have not had the uh, opportunity to travel, it's been killing me. So, I do, like, things to remind myself of traveling and excursions and going out of the country and all the stuff that we can't do right now. It's like... I don't know if you guys remember the other day I had my uh, cruise cup. So all this stuff that takes me back to those those fond memories. But we um, this week has been a good week for me. It's been a good week. In fact, uh, one of my students today I had a phone call came in. Uh, it's been a good week. Like I said, we uh, had a great guest for the podcast that um, I interviewed today. I mean, I interviewed Monday. I'm sorry. And we had another podcast guest that was released this week, uh, which is a really, I mean, look, I'm telling you, um, I actually recorded the intro for it earlier. Definitely, I think uh, everyone, at least the folks here listening, uh, should be to listen to that episode with Danita Conway, uh, Proven Management, her organization, uh, they're doing uh, logistics management. And it's not logistics in a sense of trucks, but it's logistics in a sense of moving personnel, people, equipment, computers, things like that. So it's 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 really, I think a lot, it'll resonate with a lot of folks out there, and particularly those people who are in the professional services space. I know a lot of times we we've, we've talked about IT, we've talked about construction, uh, we've had some people on with the mobile barbershop, and my man Frank that does the catering, free throw Frank. So, but. This particular episode, we're featuring someone who's a staffing business, but not staffing in terms of just staffing like phone calls, but staffing uh, in terms of bodies and moving services that, again, a lot of folks, when they think about the government pie, they're all, they talk about a lot of the similar industries in terms of janitorial. But this just goes to show you the depth of the, uh, the types of contracts and opportunities that you can get. Um, and then... So that's that's this week's podcast guest. It was released yesterday. Definitely check it out. The video, uh, I, I can't, I don't want to throw Maria under the bus, but the video will come out any day now. The actual YouTube video with that podcast guest. I also had a great conversation Monday uh, with an Alaska Native Corporation. For those of you who've been following me, who know me, uh, I love tribal companies. I love Alaska Native Corporations. They're our friends. They're our partners. Uh, they are really wanting to work with small businesses. A uh, great way when you're looking at doing mentor protege opportunities, uh, all the all small mentor, that, that these are our allies and our assets. If you are working in any type of uh, facility, uh, but no, Maria, the intro is already there. I, I dropped the intro in Dropbox earlier today. Uh, so I did. But if you are working on any federal job or federal project or at a federal facility, if you happen to be a subcontractor, I would encourage you, if there is an Alaska Native Corporation or tribal corporation on that facility, um, I'm telling you, reach out to them, talk to them, uh, find out about opportunities that they've got going on and ways in which you guys can start building a relationship. And Again, for those of you coming on, they are our friends, they're our allies. They Look, I learned something that I didn't know. I've never personally been to Alaska, but when I was talking to um, my guest, who actually handles a lot of the tribal nation corporations, so I asked her, and, I, and, and this may seem like a really dumb question, because since I've never been to Alaska, in preparation for the interview, I went and looked up like Anchorage, Alaska, because I wanted to see what it looked like. And I'm like, I didn't want to think or assume that these people all like, you know, live in igloos and things like that. I, I just thought it was kind of silly. So I looked it up and I saw like a big city. I'm like, okay, the city's legit. 
And then when I asked her, I said, hey, you said there's over 200 tribes, right? And so I, like just outside of Anchorage. And she said, I go, well, I see a big city. I see buildings that live in a city. She said that most of them actually live what's, what's called, what do they call it? Like off road. So they live off the actual and non-paved roads is where the actual tribes live. <clears throat> so it did it did kind of like confirm my stereotypical mindset about how some of those tribes lived. Um, but but she was saying to me that yeah no it wasn't it they weren't what we deem what we see in terms of these tribes owning casinos and all this stuff. Uh, it goes to shareholders and it's distributed. But a lot of them are living in like third world type conditions, no internet, um, inconsistent power. When COVID hit, they had to, you know, she said some of them are only accessible by boat or plane. And then when at certain times of year, when the, the, the lake or the river, whatever, the water freezes up and ices up, they can't get in by boat. And so it was just really interesting perspective on it. But the bottom line is, I think um, for me, when I was working in the space and visiting, I uh, I noticed on every military base that I went to, I always could find, I would always run into these tribal companies in Alaska companies. And you know, because they have these really strange names. And I said, man, but at the same token, they always gave me a chance. They always gave me work. So that's a nugget I definitely want to leave everyone with today is if you're on any facility, any installation, um, if you're looking at uh, if, if you have the choice, right, and you have what's up, Missy Tarver? If um, if you have the opportunity where you're looking at something and you're looking at say ten companies on the list, I would the first thing I would do is find out on that list. Look, Shaniga, uh, see, I would find out who's on that list and see which one of them are tribal or uh, A and C, and that's who I would talk to first. That would be the first call I made. Like if you had to choose between out of 10 people, that would be the first ones that I, I made and reached out to just because I'm telling you they're, they're um, and, and, and even further, she further, we, when I, in talking with my podcast, and it's going to come out, it's coming out soon. She actually said that a lot of the corporations, they reach out to them about investment opportunities, about buying their businesses. Did you know that you could actually sell your 8A business or your government contracting business? Alaskan Native corporations buy small businesses. They buy us. If you build your business up successfully, you can actually sell it to one of the ANCs. So they actually buy corporations out there. Um, so you know, I I I love it. I love it. I love it. I um, so I just want to talk about that. By the way, I always remind everyone: this is your time. It's not my time. I I know I get on here and I talk, but it's really. I'm waiting for someone to ask some questions. Feel free to shoot out. Um, I've been in a meeting with them for months. Their 22 million has shifted to 100 million. <laughs> and I, well, I mean, I think going from 22 million to 100 million is great. Uh, you just gave me an idea. I'm still a reservist, so I have access to all bases. I need to check DPMS and the contracting offices. Exactly. Tell me more about their 22 million shifting to 100 million. I'd be curious to hear about that story. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm again. I'm working with one myself now, personally. I, I, in fact, I, uh, I will be flying to Rhode Island in the Boston region on Labor Day week. That week, meeting with my partner, the company. So, we'll be. I'll be flying up and meeting for the first time in person. We did a Zoom call. Uh, we signed the paperwork stuff. So I'm going to be flying up. We're going to spend a couple of days together and explore some of the areas where we're going to target and attack. So these are things that I'm doing. I'm Look, I'm not telling people not to do stuff that I'm not doing. I'm not giving you arbitrary tips. These are things that actually that I'm doing that I know. And we have someone else in the group that's working with A and C and they're going after a $40 million opportunity. So expand your horizon, expand your ideas. Uh, this is a, an, a concept that I shared with another podcast guest uh, who was looking for investment. I asked her, I told her the same thing. So. Oh, the small business set aside standard shifting in Congress. Yeah, but that didn't just happen. The uh, their small business set aside standard n didn't just shift. It's always been a hundred million. That didn't just happen. We that's why I work with them because they can do a hundred million and still be small business. Um, yeah, it didn't just shift. It's always been that way. 
It's been nasty. I know it's been nasty. But you know, the small business set aside shifted for all of us. Because my recent contract that I just won this month, I forget if it's this month or last month, it was in the last couple of weeks. Um, my contract was an 8A sole source and it was $4.9 million. And I've never gone past five, $4 million sole source contracts. So the government did a, um, I don't know if it's because of COVID, but they shifted the small business standard for all of us out there. And um, and I don't know the rules, so don't you know beat me up about the actual rules. But I can tell you that I just was awarded a $4.9 million sole source a few weeks ago. And I was surprised because I was like, what? You guys can go up to $5 million? And they, they signed it. It's We got the contract. We've already turned in the bond. In fact, we're having our pre-con meeting already. So, like, we, we've, we're we doing our submittals now. We've, we got the... It's in the bag. This is not, like, bidding. This thing is in the bag. We've signed the paperwork. We submitted it. And now we're going to have our pre-construction meeting. And even before the end of the year, we're going to start rolling. Yeah, there you go. So, woman owned shifted from four to eight. So, I think we will... I think they all... I think... All of us might have shifted up to around the $8 million mark. So, yeah. So, no, that's cool. No, I, I love it. I mean, hey, I, and, but you know, the thing is, El Boogie about that is interesting. Is a lot of people still, um, even though the, they've, the, the government has shifted the standards from $4 million to $8 million, we have not made the mind shift to the $8 million mark. So I think a lot of us have not, we have not subconsciously made that shift in our brains for these types of opportunities. Does anyone even understand what she's saying? If they're saying the woman-owned program has shifted from $4 million to $8 million sole source, I mean, that's, I don't know what else the people want out there. I really don't even know what people, like, what else do you want? That's for the government to do for us. I mean, th- that's amazing. I mean, that's remarkable to, to think of that. But we're still people. I, and I know this because people call me and they want to talk about how do I get a $20,000 contract? <laughs> and I'm like, are you, the government just raised it from $4 million to $8 million And you guys want to talk about how to get a $20,000 contract. I don't I don't understand that. So um, but those are good. That's good information to share because I didn't know what the numbers were myself. So what's up, Karen? Do the work. Do the work. What's up? Nobody has no questions, man. You know? Do I? Is it because I cover all this content and I talk about the stuff and you guys all understand it all? Everyone knows government contracting in and out. Everyone's professionals. El Boogie, you always have a lot of information. You should come on and talk. Um, I don't know about the podcast. I have to check you out first to see. But we can talk about it. I mean, you can reach out to Maria and see. I mean, come on and, you know, talk talk with us and, and tell us what you're working on, what you're doing. I'm always curious because, surprisingly enough, and I told Maria this, I've talked to some of my guests who... Um, have the who have you know high revenue numbers that I believe Maria actually knows more about contracting than them um, and surprisingly enough uh, I've seen people that do you know eight figure revenue marks but they really still uh, they have a lot of questions about actually how to do contracting so I say that to say don't assume that you don't have enough knowledge or information to actually do these things. I, I, I'm telling you, I talk to people that she'd be really surprised. Uh, a lot of you out here, because I know the names of some people out here, my people, you, you have a lot of information inside of your head that you're just not putting to use. You're not putting to work and you're not sharing it with peop- enough people out there. Uh, Maria, and she, you know, I, I know she's out probably shopping or something but i can tell you yeah maria she's the goat let me tell you what maria did today el boogie let me tell you maria is a goat someone look i'll tell you maria did today she literally 
Maria, why you don't tell the people what you did today? She, I mean, Maria be pulling off some stuff. She pulled off something the other day, and then she pulled off something again today. So, Maria, we just, we just, I don't know if you guys remember, I think it was, uh, she posted a picture of us. We met with some uh, clients, I think it was last week, Maria, was it last week? We met with two people, companies last week. Um, we decided we we're going to work with one of the companies and help them out. Oh, she's in a store shopping. Okay. Uh, and so we met with the guy last week. Maria sent on Sunday. She was home bored. And she's like, uh, she sent a source of salt response to the Department of Agriculture. She's like, some guy on YouTube told me to do it. We don't know who that is. Uh, so she sent a source of response. They sent her an invitation to bid for a site visit today. She went with the, the guy that we met last week because he said he could do that kind of work. He could self-perform it. Uh, and he had the bonding. She went today. She was the only person that showed up to the site visit. They told her that they are looking to award the contract before the end of the year. And it was all, uh, invite only. It's not public. It wasn't a public job that was put out for bid because she did all of the activities and the steps. And that was today. Yesterday, she went to a, another visit, right, which was a former contracting officer friend of mine who invited me to go look at a project that, you know, I just, I told him I don't do that stuff anymore. So I threw it to Maria. I said, hey, go look at it. Looks like a small job. Um, and she went there, met with them. The, the guy told her the problems they're having, the challenges. And again, she listened to some guy on YouTube, some crazy black guy on YouTube that told her how she could solve the issues and she offered up a solution about doing a potential BPA for the, her organization. That way all these small tasks, they could just charge it against the BPA and he thought that was a really great idea. He's looking to implement that idea and then he already hit her back and said they're going to work on how to put the BPA together for her to be able to do this kind of stuff. So she's been part of, I think part of, you know, what we have to do is is educate our customers, educate our clients. It, it shows a lot when you get in front of someone and you start talking to them about ways in which you can help them solve their problems. And especially if you can give them ideas for potential solutions, that makes you like, that puts you up at a different level than a guy who, or girl who just goes to a site visit and asks questions about the specific project. So even, oh, and today I forgot, I forgot, I even, I forgot about it. Today, when she talked to the company, the, uh, agriculture people, uh, the, the, when she talked to the agriculture people, they asked her if she does other types of projects, right? If she does other types of construction, because they had more projects that they could potentially give her that they needed to get done as well. So... El Boogie, how'd you guess? So the thing is, it's like uh, a, a lot of us are, and I say this all the time, we're sitting behind the computers. We're not getting out and talking to folks. How is it possible that all of you, right, who want contracts, right, how is it possible that Maria is the only person that was at a site visit? I, I don't understand. How is that possible? We're in South Florida in Miami. And Maria's the only one that showed up. And everyone else was claiming that they want contracts, but they didn't even show up. All right, hold on. She's coming on. I don't understand how that's humanly possible. Oh, there okay, you are. I'll take it off. Uh-huh. So it's everything he's saying is true. And it's funny because I was talking to all your people today as well. And I told them, like, I listen to what he says. That's all I do. I repeat the information you give us. And, like, I, and the reason a lot of people is like, oh, I called you and stuff like that. Like, I'm out there working. It's not like we're sitting back just doing nothing. Like, I'm out there. You're out there. And I just finished having this conversation with other people. I'm like, the big the, – the biggest thing that sets you apart from everybody else is that we're actively doing this thing. We're working. That, we're working. Yeah. And I use everything that you give everybody else. Like I use my letter of interest is yours. I changed the, the letterhead. I changed the information. I word it differently. <clears throat> Capability statement came from you. Like I regurgitate your information. And these people, like the guy from yesterday, 
he sent me the scope of work. He's like, did I, do you, did, did so-and-so give you the scope of work? I'm like, no, I'm so used to writing the scope that I didn't even think of asking. He's like, here you go. And I'm like, perfect. Right, so, I'm, so let's ask this. You, you went, okay, Sunday, you sent the email. So was in Source of Salt one? Yeah, yeah. So Source of Salt Take was last Sunday. So last Sunday, I send out a source of stuff. I just Which, responded okay. to it. Um, basic, okay, now, never... hold on, wait. So, by the way, so you used the source of SOT from the free video that we talked about and the free source of SOT template we have on our resources page. Free. Yes. Okay, it's a free template on our GovCon Giants resources page. Free. Free. Like, all free. I did was I free. looked at it, I copied the same information, change Evan Cobb to MJ Global, and I send it off. Sources thought, by that was the way, last the, okay. the sources thought came after your video on sources thought. It it like taunted me to go on Beta Sam to look to see what's around me. I'm like, why not? It's Sunday. I have nothing better to do. Right? Hold on, time out, Maria. I want to say that. So, by the way, I don't think you guys understand this because we all assume that Maria has me. She got the idea from watching my video, like everyone else could have done. It's on YouTube, <laughs> so it's not like she. Uh, my, I went on there because you pulled out a source of thought for some gen. It's a VA one for Jan. Oh yeah, I pulled it out. Yeah. I, by so, the way, I do that every week. Is I do a, a update a source of thought weekly video on Fridays that I give everyone. I go through and look at all the source of thoughts for the week uh, off of Beta Dot Sam. See Panama. Panamanian Flavor said, I just got off the phone with her. <laughs> like, right before I came, in, came into the store and they told me there's five minutes to close, is because I was in my car talking to her right now. All right, keep going. All right, keep going. So I so. sent in the source of thought. And it's funny because I got on the phone with you and I said, oh, it says right here, this is not going to be a word. This is not a source of an award. And I laugh at it because that's all people see. So people right. don't respond to them. Right. So you triggered me to actually respond. So I respond, and then th that was last week. This week, no, at the end of last week, Thursday, I get a response from them. I send it out Sunday. Thursday, mm -hmm. I get a response saying, oh, it's because of your sources thought, here's the R scope of work and the RFP. And I told you yesterday, like the, the standard form, it says, I was like, I giggled a little bit because I got excited because it says negotiated. Like the little box is ne right. negotiated. Off negotiate it. Negotiate it, people. Listen to that. Negotiate it, contract. So, okay. And I, now, so, let me ask you this. Wait, when did we meet the guy that we're working with? Oh, uh, when was that? It was right with, it was last, last Friday, last Thursday. So, Thursday. Okay. So, Thursday we met him. Sunday, okay. I, send it, I had sent it off, and then this came up. So, when I got the scope of work for it, I reached out to him for a reference. Hey, do you know anyone that does this? It's like repaving of road. And okay. his answer right away, he called me. He's like, we do that. <laughs> and I was like, oh, do you want to go to a site visit that I got invited okay, to? Okay, wait, let's time out. Maria, how did you meet the guy? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> See, you're, you're not telling everybody the whole story. So, how did you meet the guy, Maria? So um, a year ago, I followed this black guy's advice on YouTube. Uh -huh. okay. <laughs> and I go on the free DSB as profiles of people right. and uh -huh. I, I check off 8A because I need an 8A because there was an opportunity for NASA and you needed to be a Florida based 8A company with three projects being done. So I went on DSBS, found construction companies that are 8A here in South Florida. Okay. And then I start looking at their past performance because I needed that minimum requirement to be met. So okay. I started grabbing their information, looking at their past room performance, sending out emails. And he was okay. one of the guys that reached now that, out when, to when us. Was that, when, day, when was that? Did you send those emails? It was that same Sunday I sent Sources Thought. Okay, so it was two Sundays ago. Yeah. So, so two weeks from this Sunday. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, Somebody else needed uh, the date. So two Sundays ago, you sent out emails. Yeah. The guy responded. We set up a meeting with him when? Uh... Wednesday. 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 Yeah. Okay. So Sunday, you email the guy. You call him on the phone, and then we meet with him on Wednesday. Mhm. Mm so all we right. meet him on Wednesday because he responded right away. Let's do it. That's all okay. it was. It said, "Let's do it." 
right? So I spoke to him on the phone and I told him, do you want to meet just so we could go over the, the minimum requirements? Just talk about that. So it's this weekend when we're going to start putting it together because he sent us all the information. Um, we saw that there was a requirement he couldn't meet. So okay. it was the bonding requirement. They required right. like five million. So I reached out back to him like, look, unfortunately, I don't think you can meet this requirement, but we still have that USDA sources thought invitation that I got. Right. So um, I got there early today. So now, it, wait, hold on. Mm -hmm. I got to go through the steps because I know the story. So the USDA, did they publicly post this bid? No. All it okay, was. So they didn't publicly a, post it. So. No. So All I, can't it go is, get it. Is a, I can't go take this contract from you? I'm sorry, but so your wait a circus second. thought date, due date is way past it. Wait a second. So people, when they ask about simplified acquisition, would you call this simplified acquisition? Uh, you don't even know the words, right? I, <laughs> the you don't one, even know. It, it, it I'm going to guess. Well, no. Well, well, it depends on the threshold. I don't know where the amount of money is. Okay, you don't but, know where it's at, right? You don't know how yeah. much it's going to be yet. Okay. The, the one for the, the, the other one that I went to. I can tell you, you it's simplified acquisition, but that's okay. Okay, there you go. I, I, I believe I, you. I, I'm, <laughs> it's simplified acquisition because it, Eric said so. I told that's why people, they didn't put like, it out for bid. You know, what, you know what changed me a lot was I learned to trust you. Whatever you say, just do it. Because I used to say, but, but why? I don't get it. Like, but no, like, uh, that doesn't, I learned to just, okay, just do it. And if it comes, it comes. Because I, like you said, sometimes resources thought we never hear from them again. So, and I told you the other day, I'm like, I think I always get the oddball things in a good way. So I got this RFP. I showed up to the site visit. We were early. Uh -huh. Um. And the lady came out and she's like, oh, who are you guys with? I'm like, oh, MJ Global. She's like, oh, you're Maria. You're da da da. We're like, yes. She's like, well, Wait, I haven't. So the lady knew you when you came. Yeah, because I had to send her my name and my company. <laughs> but so many people just bid, 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 random jobs, random bid. We send out bids. How many? Mm -hmm. 50 bids. We're going to get two. No, it's not like that. So uh, she's like, well, there's another company that's supposed to come. Let's give them five minutes because it's uh -huh. 225. It says, no latecomers will be allowed. So mm -hmm. I left super early because everyone knows traffic in Miami. You never know. And I was getting on that Palmetto. So if you're from Miami, you know the Palmetto. So I got there super early. Good thing because I got lost. I ended up at a park because this place is not just your usual base. It's like in the middle of multi-million dollar houses. So I got lost. I, just, I, I finally made it. My guy called me. We're there. So she's like, let's wait five minutes for the other company. She goes, oh, well. I waited enough. She's like, first of all, I don't like uh, latecomers. So that's already. She's like, we're going to start anyway. She just does not do latecomers. OK. Uh -huh. <laughs> so she took us around. She explained to us a lot of things, like showed us exactly what she needs done, where to get done, how she wants the proposal, how she wants things itemized, exactly what she wants. I like the fact that my guy was he's the expert in this and that's why i told him to go because she suggested a few things like edging of the concrete like how this works how that works the fact did you know that roots follow the branches on top so trimming a tree is going to help not crack your foundation with roots oh interesting i didn't know that i didn't either. that's interesting and, and she explained Thank you. to and she explained to us like what they do there is research they're a research facility mm. but they're in the middle of a beautiful thing out there is that the one up old cutler yes yeah. Like you think you're going into the estate. Tito Star, you know where it's at. <laughs> it yeah. says USDA, but you don't That's know where the entrance is. Yes, you have States. to go into Deering State. Yeah, yeah. I know it's at. Uh, yeah. So, um, so we were the only ones there. She took the time to walk with us, stopped with us, explained everything. This is included. This is not included. This is what I want. My guy suggested a bunch of different things. Like she really was, she was very strict, but she liked that he, knew the knowledge and she goes yeah. have you guys done government contracts we're like yes i actually work with the coast guard he's done work with he's like i've done work with fema she's like oh she's like oh so you guys know how this government stuff works so she goes oh so that made her feel like we understand it All and right. understand how this works so she didn't have to worry about us do you know to tell you get registered in beta sam <laughs> yeah. all right keep going i'm sorry i'm a clown <laughs> I've got to be a clown. I got to be a clown out here. 
so right. uh so, so at, at, at the end i told her i'm like look we're not going to do it under my con under my company um we're actually going to do it under his because he's 8a so in case of anything you could so source it to him so she's like oh that's really good she's like oh you're 8a she's like do you guys have a lot of experience in construction i'm like yeah so I start telling her what I do, and then he start he comes back out and he tells them what he does, and she's like, "Hmm, interesting," because she's like, "Do you know anything about greenhouses?" Mm -hmm. So she's like, "He's like, um, I do metal." He tells her a little bit more, and he's like, "Well, we have that greenhouse over there, and the one behind it that we actually been looking to get redone, and da da da." So when it's time for it to come up, I'm gonna make sure I call you guys. So nice, you know, it's interesting. What it, when you tell. You told me this on the phone, but what did you say to her that you do at your background construction? I what do kind of work do you do? I do facility maintenance. Okay, thank you. Uh, I told I her. Wanted I want to hear do, you say that. <laughs> I told her I do a lot of facility maintenance stuff that I work strictly with the Coast Guard, and that um, they call me for. Uh, I told the person from yesterday's site visit as well that I do a lot of the smaller stuff, and I work with along with 8A companies that way. Because she she even told me too. She's like, I don't like putting stuff out to bid. She's like, it's just a long process. And the reason they had to do it this way, they did the sources thought, was because of the time crunch. That if they were to put it out for bid, wait for the site visit, wait for submissions, wait for everything, it's too long of a process, and they were not going to make the fiscal year. And it's so, funny, every time she's like, and you, and I'm like, yeah, she's like, and you know that year's coming to an end. I'm like, yes, we know. So she starts giggling, like, and she says that they're going to um, issue an award out of this sources thought solicitation. So, yeah. I, so if I waited for Beta Sam for this to come out, I wouldn't have got it. You could keep waiting. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me, let me ask you this question. Um, uh -huh. From a source of thought to submission a bit, when do we expect to hear back from an agency? Okay, so I've submitted sources of thought. I've never heard from them again. Um, right. Like I said, I happen to always get the oddball one in well, a good way. Yeah. So, um, but. So, this one was I, out. I personally, like, look, guys, I use Sources Saw as marketing my business. It does, I'm not, I'm not looking to hear back from them, okay? I just keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it. Um, it's one of many tactics that we use and that we teach. So it's not like this is the only thing that you're going to do, right? We have a three-pronged approach. This is just one of them. So the idea is to be on the top of mind for an agency when opportunities are come around that fit your needs. There's no reason to, to expect, have any expectations when you're doing this. Just do it and trust the process. Know that they're seeing you, they're hearing you, they're, they're receiving your information. And again, if you treat it like marketing, this is part of your marketing budget, you're just finding another way to get in front of those agencies. Um, I've had times where I haven't heard back from them in 18 months. And on my presentation that I gave for the SBA, it was 18 months before I ever heard back anything from the agency. But it's okay because I went sitting around waiting on that one agency. I sent them out to, I responded to multiple sorts of sites, multiple agencies uh, in the mix, like Maria just said. Yes, today she was on a site visit for this. Yesterday she was on a site visit for something else. Sunday she was sitting out sorts of sites. Thursday we were sitting out having a meeting with clients. You have to be doing activities. Right. So if you're just sitting around waiting for something to come out and pop up on the screen. That's, and the that's week not... before we did two site visits. Oh, and I told you the the last three site visits. Two of them were not solicited on beta. And then the last three, I've been the only company that shows up. The last three. Three. The last three. Only so, what, so what is the rest of what is the rest of everyone doing out here? I don't know, because Miami traffic's <laughs> a little bit insane and I know there's people in Miami. And I hear every because when I called all them eight eight people, they're like, Oh, there's nothing there's no work out here. Oh there's COVID. No work. Oh this, oh that. And I'm like, I haven't stopped. Guys, honestly, I have not stopped since all this COVID started happening. I've had three projects started and finished. Right. I had proposals. I had site visits. I had two site visits in two different places. Well, now four with these two today. So it's not, it's not an excuse. I don't want to hear. And, then, and, and then, I was full of excuses. So this is not an excuse. On the calls, mentoring other people that are doing projects in other states as well, right? <laughs> Putting together deals for them, helping them put it together, and figure this out in California, 
in other places. Yeah, and I am answering people's phone calls about our membership and I'm and still responding to emails and oh oh yeah, and I I got a contract. We got a contract signed yesterday to start another project in Marathon in Islamabad. Oh, you got that so, one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, what what agency is that one? Is that that one is Coast Guard. Okay, okay, okay. That All that right. one's Coast Guard. The proposal I turned in was um, Air Force yesterday i don't know what these people are under they're a very unique company and then today's usda okay all right um do the person, work CeeLo says use the source of thought got an invitation to submit a package submit a package good job awesome. i love it i love it matter of fact hey it's like that time of year right now here. i just one of our guys he said to me he think he texted me a text today and he said eric i just want a monster contract thank you so much for everything that you Yay. do uh my man Mo, he, he won a monster contract today. So, like, uh, for me, I was talking to someone earlier, like 6 o'clock, and even though they tell me that this is the untraditional approach, for the people on my side, this is the traditional approach. <laughs> I said that because I, when I was on your first 7J training, I'm like, this is crazy. I'm like, this is, like... Like for me, the untraditional is tradition, and the traditional is untraditional. It's untraditional, right? Like I'm used to, and that's why I tip the guys like did did I get you the the scope of work? For me, it's like oh, I'm so used to having to write them up. I well, didn't you're really used to doing negotiated jobs, so and that's what I t what I say. I tell people, ninety nine percent of what I do is not. It's all negotiated. It's not bid work. It's not publicly available. So that's the same thing you're used to, but even further, you're used to even writing up the jobs to to, to give them to yourself. Mm -hmm. So you're spoiled. <laughs> get off my get off my IG. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Gotta go find the sweater. <laughs> there you go. The goat, Maria. That's right. Yes, I am silly. Uh, what do I mean by saying the year's coming to an end? The government's fiscal year in September 30th, and they typically spend the the largest percentage of their budget is spent in the last three months of the fiscal year. So July, August, September, that's when they spend, I think it's like 40% of their budget. So that's awesome. Uh, fourth quarter, baby. That's right. Virgin Islands, what's up? Freight Lady BJ. Okay. Uh, as a freight broker, I have a $75,000 surety bond, but you mentioned that you have to have additional bonding to qualify. Uh, I don't know what the bonding requirements are for for freight brokering. Um, we do have someone that just won a contract for freight brokering literally yesterday. Uh, what I would suggest to you is to, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I, this applies to everyone. If you have a question, concern about a requirement, go back and pull up an old solicitation and find out what are the requirements say, what the standards are and then use that as your basis. So what I would say is try to find an old solicitation RFP for freight brokering and figure out what, what are they calling for in terms of the bond amount and then use that as your basis. That's, that's the best information I go. I don't know off the top of my head what the number is, but, uh, and, and again, I have the video on YouTube where we talk about IDVs. Those are great ways to benchmark your company to see how close are you are being ready to be an actual prime contractor. So IDVs, um, you go on my YouTube video, we talk about how do you use IDVs to learn uh, whether or not your company is prepared to start being working as a prime or should you become a sub? Uh, that's a great tool and a great way to start learning what are the things that you need in order to qualify your company to start doing those contracts. Bum, bum, bum. My man says, hey, Maria, congrats. Just curious, do you have a consulting company or a construction company? So Maria, uh, Maria has, she, Maria actually is a licensed contractor, so she does have a construction company. Um, so when she submits, she submits with her company name. But because we um, are trying to take advantage of the, again, we're, again, the idea, look, there's no one way to skin a cat. I'm sure we've all heard that saying before if you haven't. Uh, it just means there's no one way to do things. There's multiple ways. Like I was telling somebody today, the way that I see myself uh, is like a deal maker. No different than the venture capitalist world and the deal funds. We put deals together. 
So whatever the government needs, whatever it takes to put together, we go in and bring in those pieces to make it happen. Um, in this particular case, we know that's in the fiscal year. We know that it's more advantageous for the government to work with businesses and companies that they can sole source projects. So then we bring in those people. Um, if we're looking at an opportunity that requires plumbing, we're going to bring a plumbing prime to the table. We are looking at the deal, right? Not looking at it for us as an individual. We don't do things as individuals. We do things, again, we have a vast network. If you're in the GovCon community, you are part of a vast network of other contractors, which again, like I told the girl today, we had someone that says the PPE, she had contracts or opportunities for PPE, but she didn't have the funding. Well, I go, if you had been part of our community, we raised $10 million for PPE. You wouldn't have that problem. So again, we look at the deals and what does it take to put a deal together? What are the, the, the components and the elements that we need to assemble to give the government a complete solution? And that's the way that I see things. And that's the way that, again, when I'm telling everyone out here, we may say consultant, right? So when you ask, say, oh, if you're a consultant, well, sometimes Maria's the prime, sometimes she's the sub, sometimes she's a consultant. It just depends on the size of the deal, uh, what the government needs, what players need to be involved and what they're asking for. And that's how we determine it. Uh, there's no, we don't go in. Like she said, she sent in a source of sought notice for MJ Global, which is her company. She called the 8A for a reference. He happened to say he can do the job, but she didn't call him to do it. She called him for a reference of someone that could do it so we can put together a good deal. Does that make sense? So we didn't look at it. We don't go in there um, and say that like we're only going to do it this one way. We look at it and say, okay, how do we structure this in the best way to where we can be the, the best qualified um, group, right, to go after and tackle this particular opportunity? And that's the way we look at every job. That's the way we look at every bid. We're not um, so focused in on, oh, I have to have it. Like, I ha Evan Koff has to have it or MJ Global has to have it. We we put together the deals. And, and some of my podcast guests uh, have come on and said, as small businesses, we're supposed to be working together, not against each other. If you have a PPE contract or an opportunity that's five million bucks and there's a million in profit and you sit on it, then shame on you. Shame on you. I'm not upset that you didn't make a dollar. I'm not, I'm not even mad at you because you're supposed to take that and bring it to the table and say, hey, guys, we've got this opportunity. But what do most folks do? Crab in the bucket mentality, right? They try to keep it to themselves and say, oh, I'm going to try to figure this thing out and you get nothing. Right. So what, what do we always say? A hundred percent of zero is still zero. Five percent of, you know, something that's better than nothing. And, and that's really what I find. A lot of people come into this and they send me emails all day. And they're like, this don't work. And I ain't got nothing, and nothing happening for me. Nothing's moving. We on the phone with people every day doing deals, baby. We talking to people every day, every single day. Pierce is on here. Did I not talk to Pierce? Missy, did I not talk to you the other day? Okay, Karen. I was on a Karen was on a call with us last night. We were on a meet and greet at seven. We were on a call at eight. Okay, we, I mean we are doing deals. We are talking amongst each other. We are openly sharing information that we have because no one of us can go and grab all of the market data and the market research. Hey, you're over here. You see this? We talked to Rafa. Rafa's over here. Rafa's working on a job with FAA North Carolina. She's also putting together a bid in Indiana. That came from Randy, who's in Texas. We're, again, if you looked at the, the, the post that I did today, democratization of information, make it available. Put it out there. On the Facebook group, like I said, if you go to uh, an event and you grab the slide presentations, drop it in a group so everyone can have it. What is the point and what's the good of you having that information and you can't do nothing with it and no one else can have it and you keep it to yourself and no one else can do anything with it? If you put it in the hands of someone that could do something with it, what do you think is the likelihood that they're going to come back around and reciprocate for you and then do a deal with you? And that's what we find happened. We took on Lalani, who hit me up on LinkedIn. I brought it into our circle. We've now done three or four projects with her. We're now doing some other projects with her. And, and, and she's out of like San Diego, out in California. And so now she's in our inner circle. And there's not two days that go by where someone is not talking to her, communicating her, and she's looking at stuff out in California. So again, 
what I see is happening is so many people um, are treating this, these deals like it's like it's freaking coronavirus, and we gotta stay social distancing from each other. This ain't coronavirus. This that deal ain't. It's, we don't have to social distance each other from deals. Like we supposed to be bringing it, coming together. We are all small businesses. We are all small businesses. That's just the truth. Whether it's a woman. A veteran, an A day, a hub zone, an opportunity zone, a section three, section eight. It don't matter. We all we listen. We're all the same way. No, none of us uh, have tens of millions, or hundreds of millions of dollars to be able to do any of this stuff alone. But collectively, right? Just like, and I'm sure because I know my audience. I'm sure we all saw the recent shooting of the guy who was shot seven times. They raised a million dollars, right? And may not be a great example, but when people did a fundraising for him, they raised $1 million because they came together. So why can that, why, why does it take a tragedy to happen for us to come together to raise money, to work together? Why does it take something uh, devastating to happen for everyone to get together around a collective effort? Why not be proactive and let's come together around a collective effort of going after contracts and opportunities and taking it away from some of the people who may not um, want to reciprocate, may not want to do business with people that look like you, that may not want to do business with people that sound like you, that come from where you come from. Let's work together and bring opportunities back in house so then we can hire folks, we can employ people from our communities, we can come together and create more opportunities because as I get more, as you get more, as the other person here gets more, there's 22 of us on here get more. Imagine if the 22 of us all had million dollar contracts. We now have a $22 million collective company. If we all got $2 million contracts, we now have $44 million in economic power. That's, that's saying something. That, that's, that means a lot. Let me go down and read uh, the concepts. Let me see what we got. Maria's on point. You're like a pro after the course and support. Competitive mates, not competition. I like that. Competitive mates. I like that. So if I'm not a licensed contractor, however I go, one of the team, we could bid. Let me tell you something. Twist, Twisted works engraving. The government on these construction bids, and you can ask Maria, they've never asked for licensing. They don't ask you for your contract's license. On a federal government, a contractor's license is a state license. When you're working on a federal facility, a federal facility is higher than a state. So the, the government does not recognize that state license. Now, I've seen it on really big projects. They may ask for one of your people on the site to have certain certifications. But for the most part, on federal jobs, they don't require state licenses. And so to have, you don't need a licensed contractor to work. And then there's some states where they don't even have licensed contractors. So that makes sense to me where... Um, the government doesn't put it in the requirements. I, none of my projects, I'm, I'm doing, again, I just want a $4.9 million project to do a, a parking garage. It's all like, it's a lot of concrete and spalling work. It's all like, you know, when you see the concrete, uh, you see the, like the metal and the rusting bars in it, we're going to be fixing all that, taking that out and replacing it. There, in a $4.9 million project, they did not ask for a licensed contractor anywhere. None of my requirements ask for a licensed contractor. Um, St. Pete, St. Pete, when do you go to a site visit, do you put your company name down or the prime company name that's backing you? Um, if I were to go to a site visit, I would put down, and again, again, it depends. Are you, if you have a relationship with the prime, I would put down the prime company's name. But, but on the federal side, site visits typically are not mandatory. Uh, very helpful details. Some folks are looking for microwave answers to arrive at millions, don't want to do the work. GovCon money is not so easy. No, I agree. No, I know people want microwave. Look, I know what they listen. I know what they want me to tell them. But I'm not gonna tell them that. I'm not gonna give them no microwave answers. We do more together. See? Karen, it's enough money in federal bids for everyone to get paid. Exactly. 
<laughs> my man said i'm rolling good no it, it is i don't if you scroll on my ig feed since all of you are ig people and you look at the recent awards that the government gave and if you just go back in the last two weeks on just my feed you're gonna see more money than to, if together we divide it up between the 21 of us on this call, every one of us would have like $10 million in our account. I don't know why people are so thinking there's not an abundance of money. Our government told you, you can watch, I don't know if y'all watching the Republican National Convention, some of y'all probably are. I don't know if y'all not watched the DNC Convention last week, but if you go in there, they are printing money they tell you this stuff they're not ashamed the government's not even like ashamed anymore to say we just print more money they have just printing money why are people so worried I, I i have no idea what are you afraid of when they just print three trillion dollars what are y'all what what are you afraid of that someone's going to take away from you because i that's another thing that bugs me karen that people come to me and says well Eric, if I introduce this guy to this contract and then he goes behind my back, there's a million contracts. So what if the guy goes behind your back? If you wanted to, and, and this is so, like a lot of people send me messages, I want to be a mentor, I want to learn from you. Okay, if you go out and um, you were to be a mentor or under me, right? and you were to find an opportunity for me, what's the difference between you going and finding an opportunity for another company that don't pay you? It's, hey, pretend you was, pretend you was an intern. That's it. Like, it's, there's no hard feelings in this stuff, guys. It's, you know, I was listening to Jim Rohn today. I love Jim Rohn. Jim Rohn says, what well, do you learn from successful people? If it comes easy, do it easy. If it comes hard, do it hard. It doesn't matter, just get it done. So if it's harder, just do it hard. If it's easy, do it easy. But the thing is, you just have to do these things. It, like, so the fact that someone stole an opportunity or they didn't pay you, so what? I, honestly, I, I don't even look at that stuff. When Maria got burned over for this plumbing guy for, you know, five grand, I think it was, that he burned us for, or seven grand, whatever. I told Maria, so what? He saved us money because what we ended up doing was what we were agreeing to, to split with him was higher than what we agreed to split with other people in the future. So I go, Maria, the next contract that you did, you actually saved money because now you're not you're you're not cutting, getting so much of the you're not you're getting more of the pie. So the next contract where there's like we're splitting up fifteen thousand, you're not giving away half. So so you actually made money by this guy cheating you. But so many of us don't look at that. We only see the fact that this guy stripped us out of five thousand, right? And if and if that's enough to deter you, to to discourage you, to make you want to go to commit a violent act, then you in the wrong place. Like you you should be doing something different. Um, you know, I just I, I really do. I think you're in the wrong spot. Like if if five thousand dollars is enough for you to commit a violent act on someone, enough for you to go berserk, then you, you probably should be doing something else. You you probably need to get a job. I'm be, be honest with you. Because uh I expect most of you will get burned for some thousands of dollars at some point. You're in business. Like, that's going to happen. You're in business. That You should mentally set up your expectation that at some point you're going to have to do that. <laughs> Eric, you got me looking at fitness equipment maintenance. I bet those guys are looking on beta.sip. Some bald man on YouTube told me that. <laughs> No, I love it. 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 Uh, Dale Blackshare and I share business. Truck and Justin told me about you. Oh, cool. Okay. All right. Good job, Truck and Justin, for plugging your boy. Uh, anyone want to connect to Atlanta area, Georgia? We've got a lot of people in Atlanta area. Um, so a ton of people in the Atlanta area. And in fact, all your trucking people, I'm going to be doing a podcast with one of the um, trucking people pretty soon. So. We uh we're doing that. Uh let's see. What else we got? I sure no one would do exactly like you. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. All right, let's see. Can you talk about state and local city contracts as a new business? Uh we we talked I actually on Monday 
if you go on my YouTube, we did a how do you use your certifications, and we talked about state and local as well uh, as a new business. So we actually, I just did that on YouTube. Literally, I think it was Monday. I just did that video, so it's still up. So you can you can catch that video on YouTube uh, where we talked about how best to use your certifications. Uh, but real quick. Uh, with state and local city contracts, the thing I like about state DBE programs, um, we got leads. Listen, Silo, I don't even know how to say the name. Babies, the last four of the case. We have leads in Indiana. Uh, so we going back to the state and local deal, we'll, well, I'll touch on it for about two minutes um, and go from there. Um, so in the state and local deal, uh, you have DBE certifications. DBE is the state certification. And what I like about it is you have reciprocity amongst a lot of the cities and towns. So if you were to get DBE, you can carry that with various cities uh, throughout the state, various municipalities. They, they, they actually um, respect and honor the DBE. And also they will allow you, because you have DBE, to get their CBE certifications. Uh, what the thing is, again, I'm not, I, I don't teach state and local contracting because um, I stand by and I believe wholeheartedly in federal government contracting, but there are advantages to state and local contracts. And for example, on the local side, uh, what we talked about on the video was the fact that uh, they do have what they call rotation lists. So there are a lot of rotation lists on the local contracting side, and then they have what's called pool contracts, uh, which P O O L contracts. And what I always advise people to do is if you, not just get registered at the, the local level uh, inside a general pool, uh, but uh, I register, would encourage you to find the pool, the list of vendors within the city registration. So that takes another step that you typically, no one's telling you about. And the example that I offer up on my video on Monday was uh, the hurricane contracts, because I love the hurricane debris, because again, freight, truckers, hurricane debris, hauling, right, of trash, disposal, garbage, right? That's all, your name is trucking with us for life, so I figured you did trucking, logistics. Um, even in Miami, Florida, right now, um, I pulled up that contract, and I can, till it, I can pull up that pool. It's public information. There's seven vendors on the list. Seven. How is it that there's a $90 million contract for, for a pool of contractors to do debris removal, debris hauling, in the state of Florida, which is projected this to be the highest hurricane season on record in most recent years, they projected that because they raised my insurance rates by double on all my properties. So I know that because I paid because out of the wazoo in insurance. And there's only seven vendors on that list within the city of Miami-Dade County. And I bet you it's the same thing in Louisiana and Alabama and the Panhandle. People are getting registered at the DBE level, not going to the actual pools where they, they narrow down the, the focus on a specific area. So that's what I would say if you're a DBE or a CBE, SBE, any of those BEs uh, at the state and local level, look into the vendor pools that target your specific area. All right, and I'm at one minute and 41 seconds. Uh, blah, 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 blah. What advice do you give a small IT training and course development contractor? Uh, well, there's a couple things I give you uh, IT and training. We have an IT Facebook group already, free. IT and telecom. We have an IT and telecom Facebook group that's free. And we've got people on here today. Pierce is leading the command on that. We look at all of the upcoming opportunities, IT and telecom related. We do Friday workshops where we go over and do a Q&A session on how you can qualify for IT and telecom opportunities. We look at everything. That is the only group where, because there's so much interest in that space and the contracts are so large and so vast um, and there's so there's just so much opportunity in IT and telecom right now that we literally, we pull down every single current, present, I mean, past, not past, but the current now, the upcoming and then the future opportunities. We look at everything um, and we actually have a curated Q&A session every Friday in the group for IT and telecom. So if you're in that space, jump in that Facebook group because it's, it's made specifically for you. And we're looking at doing the same thing in other professional spaces, but I just started with IT and telecom because it was so hot. And um, I made a video 
And in fact, I have a video on YouTube that says five ways IT and telecom companies can start taking advantage of the federal contracting market. So go on my YouTube and you'll see that on there. It's called five ways IT and telecom companies can take advantage of the marketplace. Uh, I may